You're watching another great catfishing video from Learn to Catch Catfish with your host, professional guide, Chad Ferguson. Catfishing TV covers tips, tricks, and information to help you learn how to catch more and bigger catfish on your next fishing trip. The ultimate resource available for expert catfishing information. After watching, make sure you visit learntocatchcatfish.com. Now, here's your host, Chad Ferguson. Okay, we're going to start off. This is the technique most of the ones use when they dip in with the punch bait. They fish on the bottom. But I have a rig that we call slip corking. <coughs> and this is the way we actually rig. You can hold that for me. Yeah. Get that there. So I'm going to start from the top. We actually take all of this off here. And one of the things that I'm noticing here, talking to Charles while we're talking about this, is one of the things I've covered on the website many times is that he's using a long fishing rod here and um, a, a pretty lightweight fishing rod in comparison to most fishing rods that you will find you know, marketed towards catfish anglers. Um, that, that this rod is, is long and, and relatively limber. It's not a big, thick broomstick. Yeah, it's a nine-footer. We, we're going to use anywhere from a nine-footer to 11. The reason that it's so light is because we use one rod and one reel. Uh -huh. Since we're fishing from the bank, we hold it in our hand. We actually never put it down unless we're going to get something, you know, some candy or something or use the bathroom or something but sure most of the time this rod is in our hands yeah we don't use two or three rods we when we fish everybody has one rod and one reel yeah so that's one reason that it's like also it because of the length it allows us to set the hook sure with for them catfish so I'm gonna start off and show you how this is actually set up here I got it right there you, don't, you start off, there's nothing on this line. This is what we call the barber stopper. This is my slip knots right here. This is something that I make. I'm the only one that has this kind. There's different versions of this, but I'm the only one that makes this kind. Okay. You just take it, you actually slide it on just like that. You pull the white string off and throw the red away, the red tootie. You take your hands and you cinch both of these lines down tight, just like that. I'm supposed to have some scissors somewhere around here, but I don't see them. But I have a blade. Yeah, that's all right. And a lot of times, that's what you, you know, most people don't carry scissors. So I just use a, you can use scissors or knife, and then you cut the extra string off. Just like that. That's your knot right there. Call them slip knot, barber stoppers, mm -hmm. that one one. Your next move is, is your bead. And every one of these packages is a bead in there, Chad. You take that bead and you actually slide the bead on next. So you can get it through this hole here. Yeah, I get that. Slide that on just like that. I'm gonna slide this up a little bit. So I'm gonna put the slip cork on. This was the only slip cork I had left after doing this show, so it's a little rough, but it'll still work. And this is a cork that that Charles makes, CJ's Catfish Bait Company, and and they make this cork and uh, and uh, sell this, so you can find this through them also. This is not something that's. Uh, this is actually, we sell on our website, so yeah. it's about one of the only places you can get it right now. But we had two, we had three buckets of them and we sold every last one of them. So we slide the cork on, usually the pretty end first, and then we put the, uh, the bigger end in right there. Then you have to have something to, to hold this up. And usually it's a weight, so this, this, uh, this cork doesn't lay down, it actually stands mm -hmm. up. In order to stand up, you have to put some weight on it. Sure. So you actually take a weight and you slide it on just like that. 
usually a cork this size, you use a 3 8 size weight. Mm -hmm. And you're also able to throw real far with this cork. Sure. Once you put that on there, you take a swivel. This is already set up. Cut that off there. You can get that all, off all the way, but it's set up with a hook already on the end of it. Let me undo that there. You just take the swivel, and the swivel is what holds everything on. Small swivel here. So that swivel is going to keep the, the cork from going all the way down to the hook, hold it up away from the hook. And, uh, you know, this is, again, we talked about this a number of times, a, a slip cork, slip bobber rig, slip float rig. Depending on which street you're on and whose boat you're near, there may be 15 different names, but, but a slip bobber rig. And really the only difference between this is, is this special uh, CJ's bait cork that he's using here um, that, that's different than some of the more traditional slip floats that you would see from big, the big float manufacturers. That's right. Um, and, and, and this is something, again, that, that he manufactures. So we got this set up like that. So usually you can use this. We also don't use it on for catfish, but we also use it for crappie fish as well. You can put a jig on the end of this. You can put a regular hook on the end of it, any way you want to use it. But usually we just use it with a treble hook. Mm -hmm. And this treble hook, we just punch and the punch bait, pull it out of the angle, and throw it out. Now, most of the things people ask, well, why are we using this cork? What's the purpose of using this cork compared to what you talked about, your little yeah. round corks and things like that? One of the biggest reasons is, like we talked about, I fish from the bank. Mm -hmm. This allows me to throw out there for, and also I can set this at any depth. This slip knot that I slid on there, I can slide it up and down my line. Sure. I can set this at five foot, 10 foot, 20 foot, depends on how deep the water is. Sure. And depends on how deep I want to fish. This knot, not only does it goes in the rod, but it also winds in the reel without yeah. getting hung up. So, for example, if you're gonna fish, say the fish is averaging around, the water is in 20 foot of water, but the fish is around about 10 foot. You set that knot, I know that my pole is about nine foot. I set this knot about nine foot, angle to my pole, and throw out there, and it'll drift right there, and it drift from the fish. If I catch one, then it's set. Every time I throw out, it hits that same spot every time. Sure. That's one of the keys, but, and it like I say, it allows me to throw a long ways. The other key is, this cork here, it's long. Your little corks that you use, little slip corks that you use, are just your round corks. If you're fishing in rough water, this cork here is able to handle that rough water. Sure. Apparent to the small ones. This cork sets in the water about this much. So the majority of this cork is up under the water. So when the wind blows, it, instead of it blowing this cork on like it blows the little cork, when they just set on top of the water, it stays right there. It just stays right in that one spot. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't fish on windy days because they feel like, oh man, you know, it's too windy. But actually that's some of the best time to fish for catfish. Sure. They like the wind, it puts oxygen in the water. So a lot of times when you're using this cork, instead of you fishing on the bottom and you're not knowing when you're getting the bite, when you're using this cork, you whenever it goes under, it's no question. Sure. That's him. So that's that's one of the key to fishing. Now Charles has said a couple of things here that, that I've covered many times and, and I still think a lot of people don't pay attention to and, and just a couple of key points. And one he's talked about fishing with one rod and holding that rod. Um, and, and I've talked many times about guys that get out and they put nine rods sitting out there fishing with his punch bait and they're running back and forth and they're not catching any fish because they can't get to them quick enough to sit that hook because the time they see that cork move or go underneath the water, it's gone. And, and they spend a lot of time running back and forth. And then the other thing is that we talk, I've talked a lot about fishing with slip corks and I've alluded to the fact that I do use slip bobbers 99% of the time fishing with punch bait, um, but I don't use a traditional slip bobber um, like you would find, you know, 
with the foam float or Billy Boys or some of the big float manufacturers. And, and the float that I use is, is very similar to what Charles is using here. Um, so I, I think that's kind of a key point to, to think about because these things are, are going to blow anything that you will find um, from some of these big bobber, bobber manufacturers out of the water as far as fishing with this punch bait. One of the special things I like about this slip cork also is fishing the riff routes. We know a lot mm -hmm. of times when you fish the riff route, if you was throwing on the bottom, you would actually throw out there and automatic you're gonna get hung up. Yeah. So you can't fish it. But this slip cork will allow you to fish five or 10 feet right off the rocks and it floats along the water like that. Sure. And the fish comes out of them rocks and grab it. So when you grab them, Instead of them pulling off and getting hung up in there, actually they will actually that that bait will come up, that fish will come up to the cork and it'll come across the water just like yeah. that and won't get hung up. And then Again. so he can fish in five foot along the outside of the rip wrap and set that bobber stop for five feet. And then if he decides he wants to go deeper, he goes out 15, 20 feet of water, then he just slides that bobber stop up higher and sets it out and that floats automatically adjusted to, to that depth. That's right. Another key that we use, a lot of times in the summertime, I know in Oklahoma and in Texas, when it gets real hot in the summertime, you know, you can't fish in the daytime, so it gets too hot to fish. We also fish at night. So with that, we're able to put a little light, night light on here. This is a special little night light that you can buy. I also have them on the website as well. They call light sticks. Different people use them for different things, but here I'm able to use them with my slip cart. I got a little tube in here that's, that don't want to come out. Yeah, there we go. And what we do, we actually put the tube on top of the cart just like that. You pop the light, shake it up, and put it right there. Bam. That's it. And I can tell you fishing for channel catfish with, with a rig like this and a, a light stick on top at night is probably the most fun you're ever going to have fishing for channel catfish at night because it is an absolute blast. You see that light stick go shooting off underneath the water and uh, you, know, you, can, you can really see what's going on at night versus trying to watch the end of the fishing rod and watching for it to move. And, and the key to that is watching that fishing rod. A lot of people use a lining. They have to have two or three linings setting up there where they can watch when they get a bite. With the slip cork or with the light on there, all you need is a little night light. And you use that just whenever you catch a fish or whenever you bait out again. So that's all you need. So again, it's nothing like fishing at night with this setup. I mean, like you say, it's a joy to fish in this way. It's nothing like it. Now let's talk a little bit.